All right. Here we go. Hi. Let me get started. I really apologize for the delay. Um, thank you for everyone for joining. I will try to expedite this because I know some of you have been waiting for a long time. Um, the issue is I'm trying to get the audience to be able to hear you. And that so you all can hear me too at the same time and it's not working out. Um, but welcome all. Let me actually make sure the audience. Can
Hello. Last test, I promise. Can you hear me? So what I'm going to do, I'm having issues with the audience here and you all. So I'm going to just talk to you. You can hear me? Oh, they can hear me. You want me to get them quiet? Yes, please. <laughs> Y'all can't hear they applauding my delay. So I'm gonna just I'm gonna just jump in. I want to thank you all for participating in the fourth This Is America exhibition. Um, it is a consciously curated show, giving artists of color the platform to make and respond to what their experience is being in this country. Um, I'm an artist too, and I know uh, as an artist, you can get typecast being a Black person or a Black artist. Like, you can only make in a certain way, talk about certain subject matters, and then they try to pigeonhole you to the, that subject matter. And what I like to do in the gallery and within this exhibition is give you all the platform to show you know how to make different. Your experiences might not fit the stereotype of what they expect of you. And it allows you to dive deeper into subject matters for yourself and have them retain or not retain whatever you want to talk about. So what I'm going to do is start with you all because you've been waiting so long. And I'm going to just jump around how I see you on the screen and let you introduce, I'll say your name, but you introduce yourself and the pieces in the work and, and just give us a brief um, you don't have to make it overly succinct, but a brief description about what it is and why, and maybe why you approach that subject matter. So, Paul Valadez? Yes. Yes, my Correct name me. is... Okay, I'll start because I'm excited. And thank you very much for this opportunity. I'm super excited. I, I live on uh, the Texas-Mexico border in a little town called Edinburgh, which is right outside of McAllen. Uh, so I'm in a geographically isolated area, and it's absolutely wonderful to see so many different people uh, that I've never met and to be really welcomed. So I, I think that this is a fantastic, wonderful opportunity. Uh, my work is uh, uh, food imagery, and the reason I'm doing food imagery is because I tried to figure out what it exactly is to be Hispanic, Latino, Chicano, Mexican American, California, Tex Tejano, uh, Chicano with an X, uh, Latinx, you know, whatever word it is. And the reason they have so many different words is no one can quite uh, agree on what that definition Not here. is. My father spent most of his childhood in, in Mexico going back and forth, and my grandparents are from Mexico, but my, my mother's family is uh, uh, from Wilkes County, North Carolina. Uh, so I'm, I'm mixed, and I wanted to know what it was like, what exactly was this, this Latin thing. And the only thing I could come up with, and I could really agree that everyone could say, okay, yeah, you're right, was, uh, was the food. 
So, uh, because not everyone has the same religion, not everyone has the same language, not everyone has the same politics, but we can all agree that the food's the same, or kind of the same. So I took that as a jumping off point, and I wanted to use the, the food and the, the idea that if this food represents this uh, 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 idea of culture, then we can use signifiers in the representation of that culture. And that's where I was coming from by putting different types of signifiers on top of that food, just to, uh, to open up uh, uh, this idea that uh, it's not a monolithic type of culture. So that's where I'm coming from. And uh, again, thank you very much for this opportunity. Yep. <laughs> They're clapping for you. You're most welcome. What I really like about your pieces, I, they're called Spanglish and then the name of the, the quote on the, the signage. And while we're talking about food and food justice, I want to jump to one of our younger artists, Shatuan Simpson, who um, incorporates like natural elements in her um, handmade books. And, and it, it talks, talks about, about gardening, gardening and growth and other elements. elements. And so I'm gonna jump to her and then we'll keep keep moving from there. So Shatuan, introduce yourself, tell us where you recently came from, where you graduated from, and then talk about your process and what you have included in the exhibition, please. Okay, um, like she said, my name is Shatuan. Um, thank you for having me. Um, I am a recent graduate from MyAd, so literally like a month and a half ago, I was in Wisconsin and really enjoying like being in an artist space. So I'm happy to be here with you guys today. Um, and again, my work deals a lot with working with what you can get, working with what you are taught from a young age. Um, my mother, she is an advocate of really working with the earth and stuff like that. So I've been gardening ever since I was young and I have been incorporating those aspects of my life into my work, um, as well as researching different ways that I can use the natural world around me to uh, tell a story about where I come from, who I am, and things of that nature. Um, the works that I have in uh, the exhibit today are handmade books, and I've been doing my best to recycle a lot of the materials that I've been using in past projects. So. Uh, most of the paper within the books I've made throughout the past six months or so. So thank you for having me. Shatan, I'm, I'm sorry, I got cut off. Did you finish? Uh, yeah, I don't know if you wanted me to repeat or anything, but... You so can repeat, like, like towards the, the end. end. We, we caught, caught some of it, and it, it, it dropped off. off. Um, oof, what did I just say? Um, other than, like, working with, like, natural elements and recycling uh, the works that I've done already to make the paper that I've used for these projects, um, I don't know. I have a focus on... Uh, trying to make my work as sustainable and accessible as possible um, with also working with uh, the way that I've been raised and things like that. Thank you. Good to you. I mean, if this was going smoothly, I would jump to the artist on the and to achieve sustainability. But I'm gonna keep jumping to you all online. And so, Vienna, can you talk about your five pieces in the show? Can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, my five pieces are 
there were envelope drawings that I created during um, the pandemic, uh, during the break of the pandemic. Um, it came out of frustration of what was going on. Um, couldn't get to the art supply store like normal, but I had a su large supply of envelopes, mails, bills, things coming in. But they are, the drawings are memories of uh, life up until that point in 2020, you know, mainly focusing on my youth <laughs> in high school and after high school and being in new places and people I came across or memories of those people. And they're mixed media pieces, but they're just on, on envelopes. And also thank you for including me in this show. I appreciate it. Love my uh, five points of gallery family. Thank you again, and they're clapping for you too. While we're over in that region of the US, I'm gonna jump to George Jordan. Hi, George. Hey, everyone. How are y'all? How are you doing? Can you tell us a little bit about your, your group that you've uh, included yes. in the show? Yes, I would love to. And I, I want to just thank you, Fatima, and thank you, everyone there, um, for just allowing me to be a part of this uh, exhibition and, and, and to, you know, just work on art with, with other amazing artists. Um, so, yeah, my name is uh, George Kevin Jordan. I'm born and raised in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, actually. Um, and uh, I was trying to just think through what it's like to be um, Black and American. And I, I decided to do these three paintings, um, the ladder, the line, and the love, based on like these three concepts of things it seems like Black people are always fighting about <laughs> or fighting to get through. Like there's this ladder of like trying to achieve something and sometimes I don't even know what we're trying to achieve. Sometimes it's just human existence that we just keep trying to go up this ladder. And it was just really frustrating. So I painted that. And then um, I was just thinking about the line, um, which I think is about voting rights, but it's just like this endless line that that, that Black people seem to, to be in to be seen and be appreciated and to be valued as human beings. And voting is just like the the first, but not the only way in which we keep trying to do that. Um, and lastly, um, the last piece is just the love because despite it all, um, black folks are just all about love and, and we are a loving people and just an intelligent people. And I just wanted to show us in love, with love and having love. And uh, they're all paintings, mostly with gouache and watercolor um, and a little bit of uh, crayon in there and stuff like that. Um, and I just enjoy the project and, and I thank you all for having me here. Thank you. Thanks, George. I'm glad you mentioned like the love aspect because especially with this show, they expect nothing but like doom and gloom, hardship stories. And then we've had in the past, like people telling us you can't, you can't celebrate or have joy. And, they, and then they'll also read the subject matter as negative when it's not. So there's a misread. So this is why I like the artist talk, but also giving the artist, you know, this platform to debunk. And love is like one of the common things that is usually missing from the narrative. They want the violence, they want whatever they have, despair, and then that's it. So thank you for introducing that. Now what they might traditionally think they'll see here is closer to what um, our exhibition flyer <laughs> detail. And I wanna jump to Afi Essie, um, who see way reviews <laughs> by the image for the flyer. A lot of people wanna keep it and take it. And I was told they saved it on a screensaver somewhere. So Afi, you wanna introduce yourself? Tell us where you're at and 
tell us about uh, the subject matter behind your piece and the title? Um, yes, my name is Afia Say. I am from Houston, Texas. Um, my piece is called New Millennium Lynching. Um, it's it's taking on it's taking on um, a couple of identities as far as the meaning behind it over the last couple of years. I originally um, had the idea in in 2017, and at that time it was more about the real identity of America. And then it morphed into being more about the continued um, identity of America that um, they are not trying to hide. And that was more during the Trump administration. And, and now it's taken on um, the idea that we are no longer standing and ex extending for and accepting that. So now it's turned into this is what should happen um, with uh, America. So the idea of um, juxtaposing a KKK hoodie with an American flag um, says a lot without having to, to delve into the whole conversation of the true history of this country. And it allows the viewer to see the point um, without being confined by politics, without being confined by ethnicity or religion, it is what it is. Um, and I, I think it's a really uh, powerful piece and I'm very happy um, that I had an opportunity to show it in this exhibit. Thank you. What I took from the title too, and the execution of the work, um, I think people, when they hear the word mention, they think, oh, done over in the past southern only but like in the most recent years there have been lynching or hanging of and I think it was primarily younger black males and they were saying they were doing committing suicides and I'm like you can't commit a suicide like that and they were like popping up across the country and I know there was definitely one yeah. in California that I can think of and so it reminded me of that too that they think is a foregone practice, but a lot of the things are still present and now getting more visibility thanks to like the resurgence of white supremacy, the visibility of it. And um, mm -hmm. and it also translates into some of the, like the regression in the human rights um, for our bodies and, and other um, uh, liberties. So I'm gonna jump to Michael Kopar, who has exhibited with the gallery before, along with some of the other artists, but um, most recently in the gallery, uh, Inside Gentrification Exhibition that took place last November, um, October and November, I think, September, October, I'm sorry. And so um, he had very poignant imagery. Um, and now uh, that imagery is again but in like a, a different format and so I want him to talk about and explain his piece. Thank you. Um, I hope can everyone hear me? Um, yep. my, name's, my name is Michael Kapaj and I, um, I have one piece in the show called uh, Big Chop and it's from a series um, of paintings entitled American Plus and American Plus is an adverse reaction to the term African American um, because I kind of look at it numerically. So the African minus American implies that my American is somehow less. So I just I decided to like change it to American plus because you know to land on equal footing with our counterparts from other ethnic and racial groups, it takes a whole lot extra. There's barriers at every point of our development. And I could elaborate, but I won't. Uh, but basically, my painting is is about uh, 2020 specifically. All my work is about contemporary America. And I feel like in 2020, and the for the only time in recent history or in history ever, America decentered whiteness, you know, like white people got like the big chop socially, like everybody receipts was showing up in public and like it, people was tearing down 
statues and throwing them off bridges. And it just was this worldwide response, like a, like a needle, like a worldwide needle that broke the camel's back kind of thing. And so this painting is about that experience, like uh, observationally, you know, through a black lens, uh, you know, but like centering whiteness in like a black experience, you know, so a big chop is like full of emotions. Uh, you know, anyone who's ever had hair, I had dreadlocks for 10 years, I cut it off, I, I grieved, you know, but if you've ever shaved your head and you've ever had a big chop and you know what that is, uh, I feel like that's what happened socially for like white Americans. And, you know, I kind of felt like, I don't, I don't know how I felt, but it, but it was like, I felt like I needed to create something to depict that. So that's just what my painting is about. You know, it's about a whole lot of other things. It's loaded full of stuff, but, but generally it's about the year 2020. Thank you. Thank you. And I want to just piggyback while introducing the next artist. Now we're going to jump to the ones who are physically present in the gallery, and I'll have them come to the office. So you all online can see them. And so if Mr. Daryl Payne can start walking back to the office, but um, he has a piece that I think ties into that um, that that fear, <laughs> that white fear of like, oh, we're losing our population and numbers and the more visible catalyst for um, this fear. And so I want to introduce you, Mr. Daryl Payne. Um, my name is Daryl Mellon. My work is two faces, um, consisting of a lot of political drama and, um, that's been going on in our country for the uh, past four or five years, longer in my lifetime. But, uh, that's my perception. Um, what's going on because we're still de dealing with a maniac that's trying to overthrow our government. Um, any questions? Is that Can you hear now? Hello? There you go. Um, at the beginning of my presentation, did you hear me when I um, introduced myself, um, Daryl Melvin Payne, and my uh, piece of work in this exhibition is um, Two Face. Um, and there's um, multiple people um, that have two faces and who are connected to um, the maniac I call Trump. And he's still um, calling a lot of controversial in our government, in our country. So, am I doing okay? Mm -hmm. Are they gonna hear me? Okay, but this isn't the first time in our government that we've had um, issues with political leaders. Um, for some of you young people, if you remember um, Nixon, he tried to overthrow the government also. And so um, throughout our history, we've had several people who tried to destroy the freedom that we worked so hard for. Uh, as a young man, I've seen quite a few tragedies, uh, drama that um, I couldn't put down all at once, but uh, this one is highlighting what's going on today for the past four or five years. And, um, 
there's even some people of color who support um, people that do not care for progress. So, any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Right here, sir. Can you hear us okay now? Okay, so now I'm gonna introduce another artist, Rhonda Gatlin Hayes. Um, for those who are not present, her piece, which she will describe, is stationed right next to Mr. Payne's piece. Um, there is a, like a lot of overlap in like the shape, albeit, albeit be it um, two completely different aesthetics. Um, so she will describe her piece. But if you are able to make it in, you will see like some symmetry that is pulled out from his work that you can see in Rhonda's work. So here's Rhonda. Good evening, everyone. I'm glad to be here. My name is Rhonda Gavin Hayes. <clears throat> I created a piece for this show. The name of the piece is The Shoulders I Stand On. And what it is, is a mask of an African-American male in chains with a lock um, adhering the chain. Um, the reason behind that, my premise behind it is we, my ancestors are the reason I'm here today because they were in chains. They, they came here in chains and I, we stand, I stand here before you all and everybody virtually not in virtual chains, but I sometimes feel like I'm in physical chains because the black people in this country have not <clears throat> been recognized as humans and individuals and given equality. That's the purpose behind that piece. Um, we may not be in physical chains, but we're literally, we're still literally chained up because we are not given equal opportunities. We are looked over for our efforts and our accomplishments. And this is America to me. Um, my, the, the piece is, um, has human hair, African fabrics, um, and metal chains and a lock. Are there any questions? What? <laughs> may, I, may I ask really? where you source May I ask where you sourced your materials from, like the chains? Oh, oh my gosh, I can't hear you. May I ask where you sourced your materials from, like the chains? Oh. <laughs> the materials were sourced from um, friends, mainly from my mother who passed away. I have a lot of fabrics that were I inherited years back. But over the years, I've collected African fabrics of all sorts. They were um, cool pieces, just different various places, but I collect fabrics. I love the texture of the fabrics and the different motifs. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm going to introduce another artist, um, Ruthie Joy, whose who, who name is not present in her piece. <laughs> yeah. And so um, I want to let Ruthie describe her piece, historical moment in our history. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Ruthie Joy. And do you all remember the bombing in uh, Alabama at the church? Okay, so my piece represents those four little girls who never get a chance to become adults. So what I did was, uh, I had been working on this piece for quite some time and I didn't know where I was gonna go with it. 
until someone came over to my house to do a studio visit. And he mentioned to me like, oh my God, this reminds me of the Bur Birmingham, Alabama bombing. And I looked at it again and I was like, oh yeah, you're right, it does. So what I did was um, I looked at a documentary on what really happened to those little girls when they found them. And a lot of damage was done. So what I did was I in implemented um, brick into their hair. Because one of the girls, they couldn't recognize her except for by her shoes. So if we think this is not happening now, it is, it's just happening with a gun. So that's what my piece is about. Thank you. Any questions? No? Okay. Bye. Thank you, Ruthie. Um, now we're going to, I'll quickly talk about one of the pieces that I have in the exhibition and it's called, it's a spinoff or an addition to, not a spinoff, of a piece that I did called When They See Us, Picking Any Freeze. Um, so the first rendition of it was kind of like a male version and it almost was like bridge of different pickaninnies, which are ugly childlike caricatures um that European Americans made of us <laughs> um with exaggerated features like googly eyes um overly red or pink or orange lips um and just pretty much a solid black face and so I made a, a female version of that called picking and freeze two t-o-o -O, but t-t-w-o as well and um there are four girls and this piece is situated next to Ruthie's. That's why I'm interjecting right now. But again, talking about the, um, the policing of us and the, the, the assumption that we are infantile, non-human caricatures, um, shift, shifty and shiftless. We love watermelon and all those other stereotypes, but it's also grid like as well because there is a, um, common um, assumption or uh, adulting of uh, black and brown children. They're, they're treated as adults when they exhibit more childlike characteristics. So that policing that comes with that and the assumption that you know they're the criminalizing of them already from the onset. So that piece um, is an inclusion. Um, it's the similarity between the original one and that is um, it's I took old um, burners from a, a commercial range to make the faces, but I added like little rag bowls to the to the girls and different like barrettes and stuff to to exude the femininity element to that. So that's where I'm jumping in now, and to shift from like I guess a female perspective to a male perspective and a more joyous perspective, I'm going to introduce. Someone who's been running around here helping me with the tech. His name is Reese Bland, and he'll talk about his two um, photographs that are included in this exhibition. Hi, guys. On. Um, hopefully you can hear me. Um, I, my name is Reese Bland. I have uh, two pieces in the show um, right next to each other, kind of juxtaposed. One of them is called Our Streets. Uh, it shows uh, a young boy sitting up on a, on a street light, on a street post next to a street sign that says Black Lives Matter Plaza. The other one is called uh, Free to Grow and it shows a young boy actually in a field of sunflowers. Um, and so the reason I have, I have kind of them next to each other, they're both kind of, both of them are kind of out, out, outstretched arms. One of them is, has a, you know, a black power fist. The other one is just kind of reaching up to the sky, kind of like looking up and, you know, the pure black boy joy. So the uh, reason I have this is, uh, you know, when uh, Fatima said, you know, this is, the exhibit, uh, you know, this is America and whatever, you, you know, feel that kind of represents that, 
Um, well, thank you. Uh, if you look at five points like art gallery down there in the tile, you can see it's actually pointing at uh, the two pieces next to each other uh, in one of the in one of the videos. But um, it's really just uh, I wanted to show that uh, uh, Black America encompasses both sides. You know, we have you know we, we fight this we, we struggle to you know be represented, be respected, be you know treated like people uh, for so much uh, so much that you know some people uh, forget and neglect to realize that there's also moments of joy and moments of happiness and freedom that we need to uplift just as well. So uh, that's why I have uh, the both of those pieces represented uh, in this show. And hopefully, um, if you haven't seen it already, you'll get to see it in person. Uh, um, I'm uh, based out of DC. I'm living uh, based out of DC. I'm from Pittsburgh. I've uh, been in DC since graduating uh, college in 07. Uh, went to the same college, actually. That's the same name, actually. K. Nicole, K. A. Ruth Nathans. Um, but uh, I've been there for a while, so I've, I've seen a lot of the protests uh, in, in person in DC. I've uh, been involved in a lot of them as well. Um, but DC repping. <laughs> but at the same time, like I said, I also also want to see you know so many representations of Black joy, and we make sure that uh, I make sure in my work that I show that just as much, if not more. Um, and that's all I got. <laughs> Then we'll be back. I'm going to introduce the next artist, who's George Williams Jr. Um, like earlier on in the gallery start, he had a two-person show with a, another artist in which he was beautifully <laughs> demonstrating positions of arrest for black male. And so um, his works are quite large and he has the two largest pieces in the show again. And so I want, um, I'm gonna like flip, go out and give you pictures of what his works are, but I'm gonna introduce George so he can talk about his two inclusions in the This Is America exhibition. Well, hello everyone. Uh, as Fatima just introduced me and George Williams, my, my paintings are large scale. Uh, I think both of them seven by eight feet. I think uh, when I'm looking at the creative process at my best, I'm a vehicle for the work. At my worst, the work is driven by my ego. So I have to make certain that I stay out of the way. Uh, the work is uh, purposely supposed to be ambiguous because I want people, I want to empower the viewer. When they look at the work, they make the determination how they interpret it. I have a very specific interpretation, so I'm not trying to run uh, from my interpretation. I, I, I want to take ownership of that. But when I do the work, I'm in dialogue with the work. And so I have an initial idea, but as it develops, just like when I talk to a person, the, the pain just develops on its own. So uh, the large scale paintings are supposed to be, like I said, I'm hoping people will engage them. I'm hoping people will use their lived experiences to arrive at their own interpretation because of the work is about memory. The work is about you know, our life stories or lived stories. Uh, the work is not about victimization. Uh, it's about empowerment. Thank you. Next artist who's going to be speaking is Portia Cobb. Um, I'm having her follow George because both of their their works um, highlight the human form in in a raw manner. And so I want to have Portia talk about her pieces. Can give the name of them. Hello everyone, I hope you can hear me and understand what I'm saying. Um, my piece is called Self Ease, E-A-S-E. And um, it's 
12 images um, that I took that are ultra personal, um, which was an examination of myself and possibly of uh, my um, confronting change, whether it had to do with body or mind. Um, so in that picture, you see a diptych of my feet. At that time, I had begun running and my feet were really changing. Um, but it, it's more than that. I think I was confronting age. I was also confronting uh, conditions in my life that were um, that were transformational at that time. Um, but Tima selected those. I had given her um, some other images to look at. So she's really, um, as a curator, has made me kind of look at my work anew um, and to look at it differently. Um, and she wanted to present them at the size that they are. Um, they were printed originally a little bit bigger. Um, and so just having a discussion with others about how they see the images, how I was seeing myself at the time, and it really was an experiment and using a digital camera. Because I work in film, I usually work in moving image, but more moving away from frame all the time, moving, working outside of the frame and not being stuck in one way of expressing myself. So I really appreciate the opportunity to present this work uh, in the gallery with this exhibition and to revisit it myself by looking back in time because it's time-based. Thank you very much. Well, I'm wrapping up. There are two more items. I'm going to bring myself again, again now to piggyback off of the focus on the woman's body. Um, and then I'll close with another artist who has that in his work as well. He, he wrote me a statement to read to y'all. Um, and he has three different pieces and one that plays off of Bill Payne's two faces with his tiki torch. Um, the racist is one of the pieces. Um, which is a carved uh, tiki post um, commenting on those who felt um, emblazoned and encouraged to take ownership of their country by defiling uh, the capital. But my piece uh, is a triptych. It's um, in a shadow box that's supposed to be uh, resembling of um, fire boxes that um, has the lettering um, break in case of emergency, break glass in the case of emergency. And it's about the preservation of artifacts um, that we thought we were past um, or document our history of different kind of protections and most, 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 mostly contraceptive. And so there's um, a pamphlet that I have from when I was in college that talks about contracept contraceptives are your rights. And then it, it elevates in the type of protection that you have. And then the second shadow box has an IUD, a real IUD, um, as a symbol of the road, the reversal of the road versus way. And then, you know, when all else, all else fails, you have to take matters into your own hand when your rights are being stripped. So in the third box, um, and the third part of the triptych is a gun. Um, in a holster, um, you know, you know, that American right we still have when the other things fail, you know, the last resort. And so this piece is called, um, I think, break in case of, break last in case of emergency, jagged little pill. There will probably be spinoff versions of this different things that I feel are, um, you know, what you might see in a museum as archival, like, yes, we were once at this phase, but knowing like, oh, we might need to revert back and, you know, utilize these preserved uh, protections. And so that's one of the other main pieces that I have. The final artist who submitted something. His name is Pedro, Pedro Velez. Velez. Um, he, he is, is an artist and art critic. 
He used to live in the U.S., but has gone back to Puerto Rico. He's Puerto Rican. He has three pieces in the show, but he sums up his submissions as, forgive me, hold on. He apologized to me for not being present, but that's not important. I'll read exactly. So he said, I apologize to Fatima Laster and Five Points Art Gallery for not being present at the Zoom conference. I don't even have the app on my phone. I feel it's intrusive. And I have never been able to control my anxiety for public speaking at our panels when I can't control the technology or have real face-to-face -face conversations. I tend to talk too much. And um, I was an art critic for many years, which always brings me problems. First, he want, I want to thank Fatima for her curatorial bravura and for including me in the show with such respected artists. I love Milwaukee. I wish I could be there in person. The three pieces included by Fatima in the exhibition reflect my direct experience with the racism and retrograde religious misogyny whipped violently by the U.S. of American of America on people like us. What was once a tangible possibility, the United States of America pivoting after Trump towards a fascist totalitarian state, sorry, just became more of a reality with the recent Supreme Court rulings. But it is white supremacist ideologies behind the January 6th soft coup which show us the ugly face of a nation up front. Shamelessly and the weak, sluggish response from institutional Democrats pretty much sends us a signal that we are on our own. So that is Pedro's statement and contribution to the artist talk. Um, because this has gone on so long, I normally open it up for questions to the artists. Um, by the audience, but since of all the technical difficulties, we will kind of end it here. So if any of the artists want to say any last words, I will let them get it in. Or I can go quickly run in the room and bring back some questions for you to quickly answer. You have a I'm good with questions. Reference? Let's do it. Any questions? So, my question is for Michael. When I recently looked at your tweet, um, I saw that there was like a monkey and also a creator at the Monkey And your title was like Big Pop. So, we made an issue about the master of your business. And my time where black people were um, finding joy in their blackness in their career because uh, people had like friends at the time. So, and they had to cut it off. They were trying to cut it off. To you know, realize the importance of their blackness, they don't have to like the whiteness, um, you know. And you talked about the big shot being associated with uh, uh, white people having the experience of having the big shot. Do you feel like it erases um, a liberated movement um, for black people? I was just wondering about that. Like, if you could elaborate more on the big shot, it being a sensitive like, thing for black people to learn that here. Okay, I I didn't hear a lot of that question, but there was a question about did I feel like the big chop did something for uh, black people? I'm not sure. So so the monkey, I mean, yeah. <clears throat> so can you hear me? I I hear you. Yeah, yeah. In in. In summary, she wants to know, do you feel like you're kind of taken away from the Black 
um, the liberation movement who focus on like their own big child to get to a natural state and giving uh, white people like throwing it, you know, reversing it, but making a focus on white people. Well, Do you I, think you are stripping I, away that sense of pride that was associated with the, the black liberation big child? I mean, the simple answer is is no, right? Um, so, so there's not even a, a white person depicted in my painting, right? There's a it's a monkey, and I I in this series of paintings I depict white Americans as three fifths of a human being because you have to turn off a certain amount of your humanity to commit the types of atrocities that we have experienced collectively, right? And so the, the, this painting is, is about, it's, it's an empathetic, you know, connection. It's, it's like, this is the one time in your life that you'll probably ever experience anything remotely similar to the reality that I live in, in this country, right? So it's not taken away, you know, what this is, is as an experiential bridge so that you know, all of those, there was, I got, I had, how many of us on this call and in this room during 2020 had our white friends calling us talking about what should I do? You know, how are you feeling? You know, I got hundreds of calls, you know, because they needed to be reassured by me and I didn't give it to them, you know, because it was the one time that they could even come close to like something realistic in my experience. So no, I'm not, giving away any of this blackness you know what i'm saying i'm i'm creating pathways with all of my works and and centering whiteness in experiences that like that are is unflattering because you know white and black are just constructs you know white is supposed to be purity and black is supposed to be contaminated and everything associated with black is negatively connoted and everything associated with white is you know guns and roses right but it's, it's at, the, at the end of the day, white isn't pure. White is fucked up, you know? And, 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 it's, and it's, it's hard to accept, which is why even today, 2020, all that stuff happened. And then all of a sudden, now everybody's big and bold. We got guns, we, being gay is illegal, being you know, pregnant is illegal. Like the whole, like they're reasserting power in this very moment, this is a in direct response to what happened in 2020. How do you bounce back from that? How do you regain your confidence? We all have to discover that as black people, when we go through a big chop, we have to go through those feelings of insecurity. We have to go through all of that experiential stuff to get to a place where we're confident and we rock it and it just makes sense. And that's what's happening right now. Like it's, it, you know, they're recalibrating and like losing their minds. And I'll just leave it at that. Any more questions? <laughs> Thank you all. I shut it down. Sorry for all the technical difficulties. <laughs> Hopefully the recording is strong. Where audio might have broken up for the audience, and I'll share with all of you as always for your records, and so you can review and share it with whomever. So thank you all for your patience and time. Go live your lives. The show looks really nice. Her feedback that I'm, I've gotten. If at any point while the show is up, if you want to come 
check, check, check it out, let me know, and I can figure out, you know, how and accommodations for you too. So you are always welcome. Reach out to me with any questions. And the next phase is to get all these magical works up on the website so that people can view them and hopefully purchase them online if they can't physically make it. Thank you so much. Bye. 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 Thank you for Tima. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for Tima. Thank you, all the artists. Can't wait Thank to you, see Mr. the work. Five points. Fabulous. I can I can, I can hear, hear you all really well, well, but I can hear things being said. Yeah. Thank you, Miss Fatima. Yeah, thank you so much and congratulations on your show. Oh, thank you. Okay, see you later. All right. All right. Be well, everybody. Be well, everybody. I found the unmute button. Thank you so much uh, for this opportunity and to meet everyone else that was here. You're welcome. Congrats. You're welcome. Congratulations on your graduation, Shatan. Thank you. Reach out to me if you need anything. If you need a like a virtual, a fake virtual tour, I can take you around so you can see it too. I would love it because I was sitting here like this work sounds amazing, and I haven't seen half of this. So what I will do after this is like what I will do after this is like set up another Zoom. Apple, since Apple, you have Apple, a Apple, 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 Android, and Apple, 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 Android, Apple, and I have an iPhone, but I'll set up a Zoom and I'll walk you through. Okay, cool. I do know that um cool. like. Apple or Android does do video calls, but I don't know if it's compatible with Apple because they do oh, the, you know what I do separation. Oh, you know what Duo? I do have on my phone is Duo. I also I, have I can, Duo, so. You have so Duo? I, I can, yes. You have Duo? We can try that too. We can okay. try that too. Okay. Cool. Just okay. tell me Alrighty. when like you're available and we Alrighty. can set that up later. Okay. Cool. Okay. Thank you again. Have a great night. You too. Hi, you too. Thank Hi, you, Luna. Me. Thank you, Maxine. Bye-bye, Fatima. Bye, everybody. Bye. Good. Bye.